anything you think you did wrong, just let it die. Chautauqua, we are coming to you live from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. Today's topic, we are going to discuss kindness and holy cow. Last week with patience, this week with kindness couldn't be more appropriate for the American population. That was my son Caleb. That was a song that he wrote by himself. Uh, he's a songwriter. It all started this year and I obviously couldn't be more proud of him. And he was like, hey, dad, I said, can I, I think... I think I was getting shut down last week because I was using music I didn't have rights to. And I was like, would you mind singing for me? He's like, absolutely. So he's amazing. And um, so Caleb, thank you so much for sharing your gifts with us today. Um, hi, everybody. I saw that it's Libby's birthday. Happy birthday, Libby. Happy, happy birthday. Um, <clears throat> so guys, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all new, isn't it? It's a whole new day. Um, you're coming to you. I'm, I'm here to talk to you today about kindness. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, man, so much to say. So um, we started this whole series out, this whole semester on the Palaha Chautauqua with this idea of living the full expression of the human experience. And what does that mean? So what it means is how do you wake up every morning and face the day in a way that makes you feel good, that makes other people feel encouraged, 
and that allows you to go to sleep at night um, with joy and with a sense of peace and with a sense of purpose. Um, and I think what we're doing on this show is, is really interesting because I'm hearing people's stories about patience, about peace, about forgiveness. And what we're understanding is that there is this web of humanity and we are all interconnected. And some people's perspective comes from faith and some people's perspective comes from science and some people's perspective comes from, you know, um, whatever it is. But we're able to come here and talk about it. We're able to go through this work. And so what we've been doing is going through what, what, what are the fruits of the Spirit. Um, but which is this really kind of beautiful little, I mean, it's been a lot of fun to kind of sit here with you guys and go through, we, we're going through forgiveness, peace, patience, kindness. Next week we're going to do goodness. The week after that, self-control. The week after that is going to be thankfulness. The week after that is faithfulness gentleness, joy, ultimately love, and what it means to flex those, those muscles or those, to use those tools day to day. Now, kindness, um, kindness is an interesting one, isn't it? Kindness is interesting because it's simple, and yet it's so dang hard sometimes. I work in a business where I've seen people be really, really kind and completely get pushed out of the way. And I've seen people just be really rude and be the squeaky wheel or whatever that is and get everything they've ever wanted and more. And so you sit there and go, wait a minute, it's that whole good guy finishes last syndrome where you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. So the person who's being rough and a jerk is getting all the attention and getting what they want. But the person who's being kind is going to get stepped over. So let's talk about it today. I want to talk about kindness. From your perspective, I want to hear instances where people have been kind to you. I want to talk to you about what it means to be kind. But so let's to get the ball rolling. I will read a few things um, from Webster's Dictionary. Obviously, we always got to start with the definition of the word. What is kindness? It is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. So kindness is being friendly, generous, and considerate. Um, I went online and I looked up kindness and I, I was immediately taken to this website called randomactsofkindnessfoundation.org. So you should go there. It's cool. They've got a ton of little stuff that you can post and tweet out. Randomactsofkindnessfoundation.org. And there's a few little things I got. When I was young, I admired clever, pe clever people. Now that I'm old, I admire kind people. That's Abram Joshua Heschel. Um, somebody wrote that kindness is love made visible. And I believe that's true, that kindness is love made visible. William Penn, the great William Penn said, I expect to pass through life but once. If therefore there be any kindness I can show or any good thing I can do to any fellow being, let me do it now and not defer or neglect it as I shall not pass this way again. So that's a really interesting concept of, of, of carpe diem, living in the moment, right now, right here. Um, I expect to pass through this life but once. If therefore there be any kindness I can show or any good thing I can do to any fellow being, let me do it now and not defer or neglect it as I shall not pass this way again. I can't tell you guys how many times in my life I have um, thought to do something really kind for somebody, but I've been moving, like I was living in New York City and I would see a, you know, an older woman with bags trying to get the door open. and. As I was passing, I was like, oh man, I should open the door for her. But then I was already a block away before I, you know, before that decision of, so how do you, sh how do you hone the tool of kindness and make it so sharp and at the ready so that in that instant, when you're driving and you can let somebody in, you let them in. Or when you're at the grocery store, you can just be kind. Like, what does that look like? So that's what we want to talk to you about today. Um, the, uh, the random acts of Kindness Foundation reminds me, I don't know if you guys have seen this or not, like, give me a little heart if you've seen the Bruce Almighty, um, the Tom Shadyac film starring Steve Carell and Morgan Freeman, it was the sequel to uh, Evan Almighty, I guess, or is it Evan Almighty? I can't remember which one. I think it's Evan Almighty, maybe. Anyway, it's the one with Steve Carell, um, and he's, he's running for Congress, and God, as Morgan Freeman comes down and says, man, I need you to start practicing random acts of kindness, and he's sort of asked to build an ark 
Anyway, it's really great. So tonight, if you've got nothing to watch and you want to just chill out on the couch, go to Netflix or Apple and, and you can rent that movie and, and watch it because it's actually really funny and it's really sweet. And it does. It talks about being kind randomly. Um, so then I also started digging in and I found an article. And I, forgive me because I want to read the whole article to you guys. It's Evan Almighty. Okay, thank you. Um, so Evan Almighty. Go check out Evan Almighty. Um, so... It's the importance of kindness. And it's an article, and I'm going to post this on Twitter after the show. But it's written by Karen Hall. She's got a PhD. Um, and this was posted back on December 4th in 2017 in Psychology Today. So bear with me for a second. Kindness is defined as the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. Affection, gentleness, warmth, concern, and care are words that are associated with kindness. While kindness has a connotation of meaning someone is naive or weak, that is not the case. Being kind often requires courage and strength. Kindness is an interpersonal skill. You've heard about survival of the fittest and Darwin. Survival of the fittest is usually associated with selfishness, meaning that to survive, which is a basic instinct, means to look out for yourself. But Darwin, who studied human evolution, actually didn't see mankind as being biologically competitive or self-interested. Darwin believed that we are a profoundly social and caring species. He argued that sympathy and caring for others is instinctual. And current research supports this idea. Science has now shown that devoting resources to others rather than having more and more for yourself brings about lasting well-being. Kindness has been found by researchers to be the most important predictor of satisfaction and stability in a marriage. Many colleges, including Harvard, are now emphasizing kindness on applications for admission. There are different ways to practice kindness. One way is to be kind. It's the open your eyes and be active when you see people in need. Do you notice when people could use a helping hand? A sense of community is created when people are kind to those who need help. Opening your eyes means noticing when others are suffering. A kind word, a smile, opening a door, or helping carry a heavy load can all be acts of kindness. Celebrating someone you love, giving honest compliments, sending an email thanking someone, telling someone how she or he is special to you, helping an elderly neighbor with yard work or food, taking a photo of someone and sending it to the person sharing homemade food, refusing to gossip, and donating old clothes and things that you don't need are all ideas about how to practice kindness. Kindness is a willingness to full-heartedly celebrate someone else's success. Uh, Gottman's work shows that your response to someone's success may determine more about your relationship than how you respond when times are difficult. It's interesting, isn't it? Do you minimize the success, not pay attention to it, or bring up all the problems with the success? That's an interesting point because how many times in your life have, have you had really, really great news and there are those people in your life that are like, and they're a little bit, they don't know how to respond to it because it means the social things shift and change. And so that one's interesting. The courage to give and receive truthful feedback is a key component of growth and flexible thinking. Kindness includes being kind to yourself. Do you treat yourself kindly? Do you speak gently and kindly to yourself? And do you take good care of yourself? There are many ways to be kind and many opportunities to practice it. Perhaps kindness is a value that could add more satisfaction to and strengthen your relationships. So now you see why I wanted to read the whole thing because that is a really powerful article. I will tweet that on Twitter at some point so you can check it out on my, on the, at Chris Pala on Twitter. Um, so it's a type of behavior that's marked by acts of generosity, which begs the question, is your home a war zone? Is your home a war zone? Do you live in an environment where you are, where it feels like combat? Because if that's the case, then I think in order to experience the full the full experience of the human expression, um, or the full expression of the human experience. I really got to get that from my coin earlier. Um, 
the home life has to be one of peace and one of kindness. And it's simple things. It's simple little day-to-day -day things. It's, it's yes and please and thank you and being considerate. And, and I'm reminding myself of this as much as I am with you guys. Because I, you know, this week as I was preparing for kindness, just as it was last week preparing for patience, it's funny, the more you try to flex a certain muscle, the realize, you realize your limitations of that muscle. Um, and this week I was... I was at work and I was a little impatient with some people and I was like, be kind, be kind. I was at home and I was a little impatient with people and I had to say, be kind, be kind. And by people, I mean my wife and my kids. Um, and then there's also the kindness to myself, which just means eating well, getting sleep, not doing the things that lead me down a path of darkness and doing those things that make me feel um, better which even sometimes means like working out or running or getting outside and getting fresh air, putting the phone down, right? Little things that allow us then to have the, the temperature in order to be kind, to have our eyes opened. Um, kind words, kind deeds to yourself and to others. Now, of course, no palaha shatakwa would be complete without me cracking open the old, the old message Bible. Um, and there are three verses I want to read to you about kindness, okay? The first one, I'm going to stick to this point, and then I'm going to talk about societal kindness, okay? So the first one is more about us, more about the individual. And you can find it, if you want, in your books, uh, in Luke 6, Luke 6, okay, verse 27, 30. It says, to you who are ready for the truth, I say this, love your enemies, let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. Here is a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. Love the unlovable. <laughs> Love the unlovable. Um, so that's the first little verse. And then Luke, Luke is good with kindness and he follows it right up. Luke 10, verse 25. What Jesus is defining, my old pal Jesus is defining um, neighbors, right? And they're having this conversation. So do unto others as you would have them do unto you, do your neighbors that you want. So then this guy asks, he's like, well, who's my neighbor? Like, is the person on the other side of the aisle politically my neighbor? Is the person that I don't agree with his lifestyle my neighbor? Is the foreign enemy that I feel is trying to destroy my country my neighbor? So Jesus, uh, so I'm going to read the whole thing. That's the context. Just then a religion scholar stood up with a question uh, to test Jesus. Teacher, what do I need to do to get eternal life? And Jesus answered, well, what's written in God's law? How do you interpret it? And the guy said, well, to love the Lord your God with all your passion, all your prayer and muscle and intelligence, and that you love your neighbor as well as you do yourself. And Jesus was like, yeah, that's right, good answer. Do that and you'll live. And what I love about this is that he says, and you'll live, not eternally. The guy asked about eternal life, and Christ responds, and you will live now, here, here. Um, looking for a loophole, the guy asked, and how do you define your neighbor? And Jesus answered by telling a story. There was once a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, he was attacked by robbers. They took his clothes, they beat him up, and they went off, leaving him half dead. Now, luckily, a priest was on the way down the same road. But when he saw him, the guy, the priest angled across to the other side of the street. Then a Levite, religious man, showed up, and he also avoided the injured man. A Samaritan traveling the road came upon him. And when he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. He gave him first aid, disinfecting and bandaging his wounds. Then he lifted him onto his donkey, led him to an inn, made him comfortable. In the morning, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, take good care of him. If he costs any more, put it on my bill. I'll be back, and you can, I'll pay for it on my way back. What do you think 
Which of the three became a neighbor to the man attacked by robbers? The one who treated him kindly, the religious scholar responded. Yeah, said Jesus. Go and do the same. What I love about that so specifically is that a priest and a Levite religious scholar, these religious people, these people who in society were supposed to be doing all the right, righteous, good and holy things, avoided the guy because he was a bloody heap. And a Samaritan, who, if you know your history, was somebody who was, um, was neither here nor there. They were kind of outcasts to the, to the uh, Israelites, I guess. Um, they were seen as sort of, you know, this guy, he takes it upon himself to pick up, to address the wounds, clean them out, put them on his donkey, spent the night taking care of him, and in the morning gives the innkeeper money and says, here, take care of this guy, and if it costs any more, I'll, I'll cover the cost when I come back. That is kindness. And we, uh, Joe Biden got elected president, and I think one of the things that he was saying yesterday was about kindness. And I think that this um, conversation that we've had in our country over the past seven months has been really about, I mean, one of the reasons why I'm so called to, to go over these uh, things with you all and to build this community and to have an openness about um, this kind of thing, patience with each other, kindness with each other. I don't care who our president is. It's not ultimately going to affect anything, to be really honest with you guys. The tone, though, how the president talks, how the president gets things done, the tone matters. And the tone matters because we have to live in that. But if it matters from the president's point of view, well, then also it matters in our point of view. The tone matters how we talk to each other. When we go to the grocery store, when we go to work, when we're driving in our cars, it is all within the fabric of our day-to-day -day life. That's, that's what's so urgent about what I'm talking to you guys about. That's what's so urgent to me, is the tone of how we live our lives, regardless of who's president, regardless of who, you know, whatever the thing is, it's not about anything. It's right now, right here, and it's you and me. And how do we flex that muscle of kindness day-to-day? -day? So, I have talked for a long time. Again, thank you, Caleb, for playing so beautifully to open up the show. We are all systems go, and I'm about to go live with the people. Da 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 Okay, um, there's, a woman, there's somebody named Bunty. I've tried to get on the show for the last couple of weeks. Bunty Fox. Let's see who this person is and if they can connect. Hello, Bunty Fox. Hello. How are you? All right, thanks, Chris. Where are you coming to me live from? Um... UK. The UK. All right. What's your name other than Bunty Fox? It's Bunty. It is Bunty, Bunty Fox. That is my name. Hi, Bunty. Nice to have you on the show. Um, I tried Thank to you. get you on a, a while ago and it didn't work out, but we got luck today. So um, yeah. what do you have to add? What, what, what can you contribute to this conversation about kindness? What's your thoughts? on? Different people have different meanings of kindness. They don't necessary some somebody you think you're being kind to somebody and they don't think you are or you're just doing something normally and somebody will say oh that's kind of you when no it's just something i do that's interesting so it's difficult yeah because like like at the moment with covid covid i've got to do well i do my kids shopping for them because i've got two grand uh, two grandchildren with one one with another and obviously they don't want to take the kids shopping so i do it and everybody says, oh, that's very kind of you. But I don't feel it's kind. It's something I always do. It's my kids. I do it for them. <laughs> right. So it's not kindness. Right. It's just what it is, if you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So what is kindness? Well, let me ask you a question. Has anyone done something for you recently that made you think, no. huh, that was kind. That was interesting. No. no, no. It's usually me doing things for other people, to be honest. Yeah. But you know, so, yeah. something, yeah, and I, and, I, and I would encourage you to hang in there because there is something about having a servant's heart and doing those things without the expectation of return that while it might feel kind of like you're carrying a load that's larger than you should be carrying. Um, I do well, no, I don't feel that, though. I don't feel that. Yeah. I'm just happy to do things for people. I always have. It's the way I was brought up. 
you well, you help other people you know so i do don't find, don't necessarily call it kindness it's just it's your way of life. helping people yeah, it's just yeah. a way of life yeah i like that though this is the way it should be it should be that way yeah how is it over there right now with covid is it starting to kick up again is it getting scary yeah they've, they've, we've got another lockdown you're in it right now right is this your second yeah. week of lockdown uh lockdown um it's the second week of lockdown. Say that again. You, you just froze. Okay. Uh, the second lot of okay. lockdown. Um, yeah, yeah uh, started last week. Um, it doesn't make a difference to me because I still work. I still go out. I have to do everything. So. Um, and what but, do you do? Uh, yeah, the... What is your job, Auntie? What do you do? Oh, I work in an internet bookshop. You work in an internet bookshop? Yeah. So we we sell, send out books to everybody because okay. we don't have people coming into the shop. Yeah, which just done on the internet, we can stay open. That's really cool. So you, so, so people buy the book, you ship it and send it. Yep, that's right. Man, what's the name of the yeah. bookstore? I hope you care. Uh, Cam book. Cambridge Rare Books. Cambridge. Oh, it's rare books. Yeah, Cambridge Rare Books. Yeah, I I do the um anybody who emails about questions and what have you, customer services. That's cool. On that, so. Are they actual rare books? I mean, are you dealing with like first? A lot editions? of them are rare books. A lot of them aren't. A, a, a lot. We've got a, a lot of rare, rare books. Yeah. That's cool. But, but we've also like got Cambridge rare books, like dot com. If you go, if you want to go online. No, it's just well, it's CambridgeRareBooks.co.uk. Yeah, that's cool. I could check you out. Yeah, but if you want to email <laughs> it, you'll be talking to me basically, because I'm yeah, the one that does all the emails. Cool. I love it, Bunty. But, yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming on the show today, Bunty. Welcome to the community. I know you tried to get on a couple of weeks ago and it didn't work, but we got you on. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, inviting me. Well, thank you for being kind innately, for just being kind. It sounds like you just do the work and you do the thing. And it's yeah, not thank it's you. extra for you. It's just who you are. So thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right, thank buddy. you for inviting me. Okay. Bye. Bunty. I like it. As a teacher, I instill in my students that kindness is a way of life. I've tried to instill in my own children as well. Yeah, like Bunty. It's just a part of who you are. Um, all right. Let's see if uh, we can wish. This person uh, a happy birthday in the flesh. Well, happy birthday, Libby. Hey! Thank you so much. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Libby. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Christopher Palaha singing me happy birthday. That's well, my right, day yeah. is made now. There you go. Um, how, how are you? How, how are you? I don't want to hit you with a kind question. I just literally wanted to wish you a happy birthday. You having a good day? Aww. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It's been a really lovely day. Uh, I, had, I had a friend drive in from out of town to visit, and uh, that was very nice, and that uh, was a surprise. And I got so many lovely comments from people and wishes of happy birthday on Facebook and lots of people from this group. So it's, uh, I'm feeling very loved today. Good, 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 <laughs> good. Well, you should. You deserve it. Um, uh -huh. Do you want to say anything about kindness while I got you? I love that you're sharing you know, your day I, with us. I, I just think for me, to me, it's, it's the little things. It doesn't have to be something really big. You just, I always try to think like when I go to the grocery store and stuff, the, the, the bagger or the checker, you know, it's like, how you doing? You look great and call them by name. Yeah. And it, you just, you never yeah. know what kind of day somebody's had. And just that one little thing of saying, Girl, you are looking so good today. I see you wore your lashes today. You know, I'll say something yeah. like that to, one, to somebody in the grocery <laughs> store. I'll go, you know, I'm out of the loop. I did not know we were supposed to wear our lashes today. You're looking fabulous, you know, something like that. And, and awesome. you just never know how much that can mean to somebody. Because I know <laughs> when I've had bad days, if somebody takes a second, you know, it can change your whole day. It can change your whole outlook whole thing yeah absolutely and so much special yeah that's beautiful that's really beautiful you know what you just reminded me and then i'll let you go you reminded me of something um when i'm on a set 
So they number people on a set. I mean, if you're the lead of the movie, you're number one, you're number two, right. number three. And then after that, it starts to trickle down depending on right. importance, right? Waitress and, number and, four. Uh -huh. Yeah, waitress number four. Yeah, I've, if you've I've got two that names, a lot, so. yeah, if you got two names and they, like, people are like, oh, he's got a first and a last name. He's really yeah. Um, and I remember being a young person on set and if you listen to the hype, you get a little big headed because you think, oh man, I'm important. I don't, right. but I'd sort of watching, like if you treat everybody in, in the world, like they're number one or like they're the president or they're the queen or whatever person you hold in, in high esteem, if you treat everybody like they are that person, you'll right. do all right. Which there is kind of go. what you were saying, just treat everybody like they're special and, and watch what happens. Exactly. Well, you're special. And it, and it, doesn't, and it doesn't take much. No, it really does. It, it does. It's, it's doesn't, you know, it takes way more energy to have a mug on than it does to smile and just be kind. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's, true. That's the way I feel about it anyway. All right, Libby. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Good Thank to you. see your face. <laughs> Good to see yours too. I'm just, I just cold called you. So that was. Like, I know. I'm like, you didn't oh, line no. up to talk. You're like, oh no. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> All right. Bye, sweetheart. Bye bye. Boom. There we go. Um, when I was a little boy, my mom used to say, you never know. And she had this, it was this really cool thought. I don't know. For me, it was really cool. She said, you never know if Jesus is going to come back in the form of like the homeless guy in the corner or you just never know. Or the idea of like angels around us, right? Like you just don't know who you're talking to. Um, and so treat everybody with this sense of decency and respect and kindness ultimately, which is like, you just don't know who you're talking to. Um, ah, Kim, let's send Kim a request. Well, hello, Hi, Kim. How are you? Good, you're, you've, got quite a, you've got quite a Facebook fan account going right now. That is an impressive, I went there and I saw that community. It is really alive and uh, bang. It's, um, it's, it's happening. It's like, it's cool. You, it's happening because people love thing. you, Chris. Yes, um, it's a real it's thing. You it's your fan page. <laughs> it's very sweet. Everybody How are you doing this week? How are you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying the topic and seeing uh, so many people in the group or on their Instagram accounts, looking up all kindness quotes, posting them everywhere. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having a good week. Yep. Good. Are people showing you yeah. kindness? Have you expressed any kindness or been shown kindness this week? Uh, yeah, I've been reaching out to friends that I know are struggling and stuff like that. But there was a poem that I found when I was researching up on kindness that I really wanted to share, if that's okay. Absolutely, please. Okay. It's called The Kindness Poem by Yvonne Ugert Kerr. Kindness breaks down barriers with words, a smile, a touch. It links us all together in a way that says so much. It shows concern for neighbors, for communities, and friends. To be there for each other is the message kindness sends. Reaching out in friendship, taking time to show you care, being the anchor in their stormy lives when they are drowning in despair. Kindness is essential. It's resilient and tough, a global glue to bind us all with gentleness and love. That one really spoke to me. Yeah, that's beautiful. Where, who wrote that? Her name is Yvonne Ugert Kerr. Yeah, that's cool. I was just researching poems on kindness because... I don't know, Samantha gave me heck for saying this, but I said, I'm not requesting to go live anymore because I have nothing inspirational to say. And they all gave me trouble for beating myself up. <laughs> I thought, you know, you were inspirational. You just being who you are was inspirational in the early phases of this Palahasha Taco because you always, you always requested. And, and so you sometimes were one of the only few, and I, but you became a safe place for me. Because I was like, well, I know I can call on Kim and I know that we can have a quick conversation about and just checking in on you and just your heart and who you were. Oh, this, this woman's great. Like you, I think you can just be, it's kind of like Bunty Fox. Like some people are just kind because they're kind. 
I think you're inspirational just because you're showing up to the game and you're still here playing and you're you're raising your hand every time and you're doing your thing. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's yeah. not who you are. So don't ever feel Yeah, so last scared. last week I, I ducked out. I I thought, no, I don't really have anything to say on patience. But this right, week like I just <laughs> kindness really spoke to me this week. It was it was just seeing it everywhere, you know, uh, all over Instagram and in your Facebook fan page. Uh, it's just um yeah, this this topic really resonated with me this week. Yeah, I loved it, and and I appreciate your kindness for your sneak peek video exclusively for our group. That was so sweet. Everybody was so excited. I know Thank you. Guys you. Got to see my haircut before everybody. Else. We did. Yeah, you're not even showing anybody your haircut yeah, tonight. The haircut but, uh, that, guys, there's a haircut. Um, <laughs> All right, Kim. Well, you have a wonderful week, all right? Keep up. You too, the, Chris. The spirits high and, and yeah, practice kindness. Yeah. It's fun to be able to do a little homework. I'm glad that I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that you did a little research on kindness because when you hit the internet and you start to, and you type in a word like patience or kindness and you start yeah. looking at quotes, um, and yeah. you start reading, there's another essay about from a Harvard professor about kindness from the psychological aspect of like how essential it is to just be decent people to each other. And I feel yes. like, I mean, like the American politics from a Canadian's perspective, it must've been interesting looking in and seeing, uh, because really Biden just won on kindness. I mean, it was, it was Trump's to lose and kind and Biden showed up and the, the way he was speaking and the way he was talking about unifying. And the, I mean, regardless of what your political, this isn't a political yes. station because I'm not talking about who anyone should vote for or not vote for, but just, yes. it's almost not what the policy is, it's how you go about administering the policy, which again, yes. when I started exactly. to like tone and like you got a kind, you know, so it goes a long, but goes yeah. a long way. That's kind one of, reason that I really like this topic this week too, is because I saw I really followed your election because you're our sister country and I have so many friends now from America through the yeah. Chautauqua and, and stuff that um, my mom was like, you're watching the U.S. election? Why are you doing that? Because I have so many friends and I care what's happening with yeah. their country. And uh, I was kind of upset of, of all the unkindness once the – um, it was called and a, uh, a celebrity would post on their Instagram that they were happy Biden won and people are just bickering back and fire forth fighting on that um, actor's page about, you know, and, and I just thought, you know, they need to really show this type of kindness that I, that you're talking about and that we, you know, I, I did the poems on and everyone else was yeah. so busy writing poems um, from the group and doing all the posts on kindness uh, really helped kind of take away from that negativity. So it was a great topic this week, Chris. It was perfect timing. Thank yeah, well, you. It, was, it was God's timing because I, this was planned back in uh, yeah. August and, and patience. And, and that that it took out. a whole week to like all of it. It was just very interesting. So it was a happy accident. Yeah. Yes. Um, happy okay, accident. Yeah. Well, be good to yourself this week, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, okay. Take care. Bye. Okay. Uh, it is 4.38, which gives us a few more minutes. Um, all right. I'm going to – I got three people in the queue, four people in the queue. I'm going to go to – I think it's Chrissy Connors. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? Good. Chrissy? Yep. <laughs> Hi, Chrissy. Where are you coming in from today? Florida. Florida? What part of Florida? Uh, Boynton Beach. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Um, how are, what do you want to say about kindness? Do you have something you want to drop? Well, I have a story. Okay. Um, so I travel for my job. Um, I work in Alaska. And... For five years, I go out there and I work out there. So I had this group, a party of 12 people in Alaska. And it was one of the busiest nights in Alaska. Like, look, it was my first time working at the host stand. <laughs> and this family was so mean to me. It was so rude, like, making me feel like I wasn't doing my job right. And I couldn't get them seated 
it would have been like an hour just to get them seated. And my supervisor came out and was like trying to tell me we could get them seated, but it will be together. And they got so mad at me. <laughs> it wasn't easy. And I got so emotional. It was it was just like oh, I got overwhelmed. My anxiety was kicking in. It was it was just awful. And I was trying so hard to be kind to them and like be like, here's what I can do. Be like, I could get you seated, but you won't be together and like they won't too happy and they were yelling and they were like just made made me feel like I wasn't right right just made you feel really badly about yourself yeah it it was and for me I was just like having a smile on my face and trying to stay calm because I was under a lot of pressure and it's like you know and like I can't really do much but this is what I can do and and like how did it resolve? Did it did it resolve finally, like in a way where they were able to just sit down and get out of your hair, or did like how, how it, did it? It did by the next morning when they came back for breakfast. My, we got them seated. We got them everything that they want. It was paid for. We we fixed it. We fixed everything. Yeah. My managers was like, this group of twelve people was just so mean. They were not happy about it. They fought. I almost lost my phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chrissy, that, that experience happened to you. Have you had a like, chance in your life to, um, when you had an opportunity, where, like if you went to a re- have you been in a restaurant since and been like, you know what, you've been, I've been in the position that you're in right now, and I'm going to treat you extra special. Have you, have you done that yet? Have you practiced that kind of kindness where you're like, or a waiter who's just like, you know, they're in the weeds and you're like, I'm going to give them a 25% or 30% tip today just because yeah. I know how hard this job is. Of course. And like the fact that I'm about to head out to uh, Montana this winter because I got a new job out there and I'm leaving in like in two weeks and I applied to work as a hostess again and from that experience, it made me grow to get better. Yeah. And I learned that if people are being mean to me, I'm still going to be nice to them, no matter like what. That. That's like just, that. like, who I am in general. I'm a nice person. I like that. And, like, with me, I have special needs. So it's, like, it's I learn slower than most people, and I, I get overwhelmed very quickly. And it, it's hard so you Cause... depend you depend a lot then on people's kindness and patience yeah. with you just because when you're walking around doing your day-to-day stuff you might move at a pace that's different than other people yeah and you need so... them to just immediately kind of intuit that and say oh hold on a second i can have patience with you and this weakness <laughs> yeah so it's, it, it was hard but hey I'm going out to Montana this one too, so I'm so excited. I love it, Chrissy. I love your spirit. I love your (laughs) smile. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm such a big fan. I'm so grateful that you signed up. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much for talking to me. You're welcome, Chrissy. Bye. 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 Sweet. I like that. You know what Chrissy just reminded me of? I can see people sometimes. I have this gift, and I can see them who they are as who they were as a child when they belong to somebody adults like i'll be on set or i'll be in the world and i'll look at a face and it'll be all cranky and weathered and old and i'll be like i know exactly who you were as a kid um and there's something in all of us that is just longing to be loved and longing to be wanted and longing to be liked and wanting and longing to be accepted and um and that's across the board man that's every single person you're ever going to come across And again, when we talk, everything we say is casting this narrative of how we perceive the world and how we want to be perceived. And and again, I think if kindness enters into the the vocabulary and the very foundation, the bedrock of the words that you speak, um, and that kindness just starts to pour out of you, watch what happens. I'm testing it. And you guys, the challenge is still on. Love wide, love deep, right? Um, We are good to go. I'm bringing... I'm bringing Gail on. Gail's always got a good word to say. 
Gail is the designer of the uh, Palaha Chautauqua logo. It is a spider, but it's also a sun. You know, see how proud I am? I'm so excited about this. I've got my little logo now. <laughs> I love it. So smart. Um, Gail, how are you this week? I'm doing good. How are you, sweet brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, sister. Are you feeling good and healthy and happy and all is well with you? I am. I have, uh, I'm very blessed to, I was talking to my dad earlier today saying that I'm just, you know, today, this week could have been really stressful and not that it wasn't, but God gave me peace. Yeah. And I am so grateful. Yeah. I'm so grateful. Yeah. God's got us, you know? Like, yeah, he does. That's why I never get too worried about anything. Like I'll see things happen in the news and I'm like, yeah, I mean, eh, well, it'll work out. It's going to work out. It will. And it, you know, God is in control. Yeah. Absolutely. God is in control. Absolutely. And nothing that happened this week was a surprise to him. Yeah. No, not at all. He's already, he's, he knows everything. Um, right. Tell me something. How do you feel about kindness? Do you have anything you want to share about it? Well, I do have a couple things. Um, one is, and it's been implied by some of the things that you and the others have said, but you know, just to be specific, kindness requires intentional action okay. you know what i mean it, it it does require you it doesn't require you to do a lot you know it can just be a smile but it there is something internally that you have to consciously do right. and you know we were talking earlier about um how do you how do you sharpen that skill to be kind and for me personally you know in my humanness I can't do that. I have to rely on God, right? I have to ask him to let me see everyone else the way he sees them. Yeah. And when, and, and to repeatedly do that, asking him, you know, to show me this person through his eyes Guess and you. that. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Do you know a prayer yeah. that I've been praying now for about, I don't know, 15 years now? is God, show me people through your eyes. Let me see people the way that, like, show them to me through your eyes. Let me see people the way you see them. Absolutely. Which is, Absolutely. you know, seeing people reduced back to their children's self, like these, you know, pure, you know, beautiful, innocent, wanting nothing. Yeah. And like, we're, where, how do we, and you're right, it is a decision. I'm sorry to cut you off. Keep going. Keep talking. No, 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 it's okay. No, it's okay. Because oh, I did want to share um, a Bible verse, and it came from Zechariah, Zechariah 7, 9. And God is telling his people, he says that he wants us to render true judgments, and he wants us to show kindness and mercy to one another. That That's not a suggestion. That's a command. Okay, we if if we uh, subscribe to uh, the Christian narrative, um, even in this case, the Jewish narrative, because I'm reading from the Old Testament, <laughs> um, you know, if you subscribe to God um, as as the the being that governs you, that's a command. But again, sometimes in our humanness, it's really hard to be kind because they've hurt you or, or you're tired or whatever. And so asking God to help you to see that other person the way he sees them is really the, the best thing that you can do. Well, and it's amazing. You just mentioned, and, I, and it's something that I love talking about, the idea of the Christian narrative and, and how does that mm -hmm. influence and shape you. But with kindness, I went on and the human secularist narrative has even mm -hmm. succumbed to the idea that it is an essential human quality to have kindness. Yeah. But all yeah. those things do come from a fountain. They all come from a well of, of some sorts. And so that's why it's always nice to know that when you've got faith in a creator who has designed us for kindness and for patience mm -hmm. and for peace and for love and joy and self-control and discipline, all these things that we are, but, but you're absolutely right. It's mm -hmm. a decision that we have to make. Yeah. My biggest, sort of um, the thing that I have the hardest trouble with, especially mm -hmm. when I'm at work, is what I consider incompetency. So mm -hmm. if I'm working and someone's not doing the job that I think they should be doing at the level they should be doing it at, I get very, yeah. I get very kind of unkind. I'm never <laughs> a jerk and I'm never like, Whoa! I'm not like the tyrant alcoholic stepdad who's like, you don't know what's happening tonight and then you're scared for your life. Right. I work with those people and I'm not that person at all. But I will do, I definitely will get, um, I will get a little huffy and I've had to just remind myself over and over and over again, you know, not everyone's going to function the same way. 
Not everyone's right. going to function at the level you expect them to function at. They mm-hmm. might not even know the job. Like I might be putting on to that person an expectancy yes. or a level of, a, of excellence that they have no idea about, that they're like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. what? I, that, I haven't learned that yet. Yeah. And so I think it's important to remember that whether it's, whether you're at the grocery store or driving or, and I forget who said it, was it Kim or Libby maybe, about you don't know what kind of day someone's having. Right. And so sometimes kindness is the best way to meet people where they're at. Absolutely. Give people the benefit of the doubt and say, you know what, I'm going to just smile and say, okay, and, and no, 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 it's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, you were speaking earlier about the timing of all of this, and I don't believe in coincidences. This has not happened by chance. No. <laughs> this happened because God ordained it to happen, that last week was patience and this week was kindness. And I do think that we as a nation have a unique opportunity this very moment right to, to, show the world what we really are about, regardless of if you're Republican, Democrat, whatever. And I love this quote from FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He said, human kindness has never weakened the stamina or softened the fiber of a free people. A nation does not have to be cruel to be tough. And all eyes are on us right now. And so I just want to encourage everybody, regardless of your religious beliefs, regardless of your political parties, we have this opportunity to show the entire world right now that we are the United States of kindness. I love that. So let's do it. I love that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And we start right here. It is a call to kindness starting right here on the Palaha Shatakla. (laughs) <laughs> kindness on your social media, kindness on how you talk about your views and how you reach out to people who, who you know, it, it's true. It's funny. Kim was talking mm-hmm. about an actor who, and I saw the post. There's a, a, another mm-hmm. Hallmark actor who posted his excitement for Biden. And, um, and man, he got, he got raked over the coals. And I was like, you know, like, it's too bad that you can't. And I, I don't get political. I don't care. I mean, mm-hmm. I really don't. Like, you read, if you read my haikus, one will pick your pocket, the other will steal your watch. Like, I'm, my whole thing about <laughs> politics is like, and, and it's sad. And maybe that shouldn't be my view. And maybe I should get more invested. And there are a lot of policies. And we are an amazing country. And the idea of what it means to be an American stands alone in the whole world. And everybody in the UK and all, I mean, and, and I think that we can all agree when we do it well, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's an amazing idea. But it is an idea. And it's something yeah. that has to be acted upon daily just like a relationship you have to every morning choose to be in that relationship and, yep. and it said you know I, I read that thing a great marriage uh it's proven scientifically like like through pollsters and whatever that mm-hmm. uh the most important predictor of satisfaction and stability in a marriage is kindness and mm-hmm. society is a marriage it's all a social contract right we go outside mm-hmm. of our homes we leave the safety yeah. of our house we enter the world and we are trusting that someone's not going to pull a gun on us and kill us. We're trusting that we're going to be able to move through the world safely mm-hmm. among strangers, that we're all going to get along. Um, my kid is reading um, Homer's The Odyssey, and he was talking about hostess, being a host. Yeah. Odysseus's son and, and wife, while he's gone, they host all the suitors. They go mm-hmm. to the Isle of the Lotus Flowers, and they're being hosted, and they're, and they're being trapped. And then there's this guy, I forget the name. It's not Menelaus, maybe, but anyway someone's being, someone's hosting, um, and he's talking about what it means to be a good host. And back Mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, like, if you were a stranger walking through a foreign land, and you came upon a hut in the desert, and you knocked on that door because you needed shelter or food for the night, you were entrusting your very life with those strangers, because there were no police to call. Like, there was no phone to say, hey, someone's taking me hostage, like, Mm -hmm. help me. And so the fabric of society is trusting Mm -hmm. strangers. And mm-hmm. kindness needs to be at the bedrock of that. And like you said, regardless of religious affiliations, regardless of politics, it yeah. should be a human, like a part of the fabric of being human. So to flex, yeah. but it is a muscle that we have to flex. It's something that, Absolutely. yeah. And to be yeah. ignored at your own peril. Always yeah. awesome to have you on. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Have have a great, great week. week. Okay, you too. <laughs> Bye. There you go. Okay. Um, we got, eh, we got a couple minutes left. We got a couple minutes left. And, um, oh boy. 
got a few people in the queue. Um, I'm not gonna have time for everybody, but I am going to send Elaine, 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 Elaine. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay, just say your name for me one more time because it's Eileen or Eileen. It's Eileen. Eileen. Okay, but the okay, Eileen. Eileen, I wanted you to come back on because I wanted to uh, say how much you were coming on the show last week and being so vulnerable and so open about patience really affected me. And I thought about you all week long and I've been praying for you and I was just been you you were really bold last week and you were really um, it was just really powerful what you said. And I just want to thank you. And I'm really, really grateful. So I wanted to have you back on just to share that with you and say that to your face. That means everything to me. Thank you. That you're really so loves me. And thank you for your prayers more than no, anything. You're, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, do you have something you want to say about kindness? Well, you and Gail um, shared everything I was going to share on kindness. The only thing I can add to that is Luke 631 to treat others the way you would like to be treated. Yeah. Um, if we can just think, is this how I'd want to be treated? And just kind of stop and yeah. treat them the way you would like to be treated. I love that. It's perfect. Yeah. It's exactly right. <laughs> um, well, it's good to see you again. Thank you. That means a lot to yeah. me. It's good to be here. Yeah, you have, have, have a great week, okay? Thank you. You too. All right, bye, Lee. Bye, bye. Bye. All right, guys. Um, I think I think we are going to wrap up the show. Hey, hey, Caleb. You wanna you wanna um you wanna close this out? <laughs> That's what it's like growing up in the Palaha household. Your dad just says, "Hey, come play guitar for me, son." And then he's such a good boy that he's like, fine, I will. Guys, um, be kind to one another. Lord, I lift up this crew of people who are watching this Chautauqua right now to you. And I pray for kindness, that they will be examples of it through the world, through social media, in their communities, in their homes, that they will be recipients of it, um, and that you'll just wash over this country with the spirit of kindness. In Jesus' name I pray. Uh, amen. All right, guys, have a Really amazing week. Ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Caleb Palaha. Take it away, dude. Hey. I'll split the other two verses. I want to love you with all of my heart. That's all I've ever wanted from the start. I want you to know that I'll never be far. There's nothing in this world that could keep us apart. Oh, I ain't anything that and right there by your side, let it die. Oh, and I want you to know that you can live in my love. For night, want you to know that you can live in my love tonight. Oh, and I want you to know want you to hear me, hear me when I say, I love you every night and every day, I want you to trust me, it'll all be okay. Oh, 
skies are blue if you can't get past the break. Oh, and anything that holds you back when you want to fly, just let it die. Oh, and I, I want you to know that you can lay off in my love tonight. And I want you to know that you can lay off in my love tonight. 